Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Same 24 Hours podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Atwood. I'm very excited about Jen Mann being here today. She has the amazing blog, People I Want to Punch in the Throat, <laughs> which is still hilarious, and a book by the same name and more. So welcome, Jen. I'm so glad to talk to you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Oh my gosh. So let's go way back in time to like, you know, 2011 mm -hmm. and you probably got a blog subscription or how do we do it back then? You signed up on blogger <laughs> or you something did. like that. Yep. And you started, I started a writing blog on blogger and you could like follow along, you know, right. subscribe to it or something. And I think get an email maybe in your inbox Yeah, right. if I Fancy. put up something new um, I didn't have any social media. I didn't know anything about social media. So I just, I just started screaming into the void. <laughs> you know? Right. And yeah. was that the original name of the blog? People yeah, I the, want to punch in the throat. And where did, was. I mean, I get where you got the idea from. I mean, but <laughs> where did you get it, the right? idea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I started a blog in 2011, I was a work at home mom. I was a realtor. And I had two little kids. I had uh, two uh, preschool age kids. And so, and I worked from home because my husband thought it'd be a great idea um, that we'd work from home and like save money and not put the kids in daycare. We could just co-parent and, you know, sell houses together. And, um, and he had lost his job during like the recession. And so he joined me in real estate too. So we worked from home together. We had our kids home all day. I was kind of going crazy. I was sort of having a breakdown. And so he was like, oh, you should start a mom blog. You know, all the moms have one. You should just, <laughs> you should just go start one. True. And so I looked out there and it was, it was sort of the height of the mom blog frenzy. And, but all the mom blogs were very perky and I didn't really believe them. You know, like who loves dusting? I just, I don't think that's true. Or, you know, I love crafting with my three-year-old. I'm like, no, nobody enjoys that. That's not fun. And so um, I kind of got discouraged and I was like, no, I'm not going to start a blog. And then my husband was like, oh, don't you see? He's like, you'd be like the anti-mom blogger. And he's like, you would write like the truth. And he's like, and you'd call it people I want to punch in the throat because you say it every day. And so sure enough, you know, people on the punch in the throat.com was still available. So I bought it. <laughs> And me laugh. <laughs> I bought dot com, dot net, dot biz, dot gov. I mean, dot I got org, dot co, dot Canada. I, no, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. I got the trademark. Like, don't come at me. You know, <laughs> I got that market cornered. And so, um, so I just started writing and, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. Oh my gosh. When you were saying the mom blogs, cause same thing. So I, I wrote many, it's actually not available anymore. Cause I decided my kids didn't need to read about that, but I wrote about my kids for a long time and I would write kind of the stuff that wasn't cool about being a mom. Like, well, here's what you really need to know. Here's where your parents lied to you and said they wanted grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what it really is. Um, but one of the things that I should have brought, I, I'll have to send you the link to it though, but my kids came home from like Valentine's day parties at their preschool. And there was a freaking um, favor for, that some mom had crafted that had a mm -hmm. shovel in M&Ms and it said, I dig you. And it was beautiful. <laughs> and I was like, I want to punch this person in the throat. <laughs> I should have just sent you a picture of it because it's like, Oh my God, like who has time for this? Cause my kids are 14 months yes. apart. They were like two and three. I was practicing law. I was like, who is doing this? Because you are making us yes. all look bad. <laughs> right. And I think that was sort of what, that is exactly the same sort of thing that like set me off originally too. And I think there's just something about, you know, if, if I'd started this when my kids were in high school, like now my kids are in middle school and high school. And so there's not near all this stuff, but you know, in middle, you know, when they were back in like preschool, kindergarten, you know, early elementary, there was such a competition, you know, like my kid went to a birthday party and like the, the, the favor, the, you know, the goodie bag yeah. was the gift I gave, you know, and I was just like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So my gift is not good enough. My gift is a goodie bag level. Got it. You know? And so it's like, you felt like this pressure. And, and I think over the years, you know, I have realized now that it's not, how do I explain this? Like, it's not about me. It's really, it's about them. Like they like right. to do that stuff. Like there, I really, you know, I've met now, you know, I call them overachieving mommies, but I have met so many overachieving mommies now 
who are just, they're just like, no, I just love that stuff. Like I love making shovels, like, you know, and you don't have to do it. And I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I just want to do it. I mean, there is still the occasional like humble bragger out there, but for the most part, and that's the thing that kind of shocked me. Cause I really thought like, you know, some moms sitting there like, I'll show the rest of them, you know, let me make this I, but amazing don't you craft. Think, don't you think that 90, I don't know. 90. Like, 90% of them are like sitting there in their like crafting studio, like I'm going to show these moms or is that just me being a cynic? I, really I still felt that way. I felt like it was yeah. a personal assault on me every time I, I know got- what you mean. Yeah. And I did too, but I think now I'm, I'm going to go with this 50, 50, I'm going to say 50, 50, 50. 50. Yeah. Because like some of my dearest friends now I've realized are just overachievers and that's just how they are. You know, I mean, you know, like last night was the Super Bowl and I live in Kansas City. We're, but we, you know, we were in the Super Bowl. We did not do so hot, but we were there, yes, last night. And I had invited a friend over to watch it and she's like in my little bubble. And, you know, it's just us. It's just us and our kids, you know, watching it. And she was like, should I bring streamers? And I'm like, no, no, we don't need streamers. And she's like, but it's, a, but like, I won't feel like it's festive if we don't have streamers. So I'm like, no. And then she like texted me. She's like, how about confetti? I'm like, no, you know? And so it's it. like, and she's not trying to like one up me. That's just like, that's just how she celebrates. She still brought a, like a tower of balloons that are just sitting outside my door right, right now that I should it. show you. It's insane. So I really think it's 50, 50 now. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I get that. I mean, I have some, some people, you know, and they always just bring, if you're like, bring chips and dip. Like if someone oh, yeah. tells me to bring chips and dip, they get a bag of chips and a, <laughs> you know, a jar of dip. And yeah, you tell other people to bring chips and dip and there is like a platter and yes. there's, you know, like you know. stuff and, ugh. but you're there's right. There's a theme right. to it all. Like, you know, it's like, yes. I, I created this for our, this very occasion, you know, but yeah. Like there's a little sombrero. Me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, funny. So you have been writing for quite a while and what is your favorite? Actually, I like to ask this question too of bloggers. Like what was the most like unexpected thing you wrote that really just impacted people or sent you into the stratosphere or you got the most comments? Cause I wrote a blog post one time about taking my shoes off under my desk at work and my feet smelling. <laughs> and it was just this like, I was because all day I was like, what is that smell? What is that? And I like looked around the office and I was like about to call the maintenance people getting yeah. on my high horse. And it was my feet, my feet. Right. Was um, but that was one of those that I just wrote down and thought, why am I even writing this? And people thought it was the funniest damn thing ever, you know? So what about you? Is there any that stick out in your mind? Well, I mean, so like the whole career that they have now, like, so now like I'm a New York Times bestselling author and the whole career that I have is because of one blog post, you know? When I, when I started writing in 2011, I had like 50, 60, 70 readers by the time you know, I started in April and we got to around Christmas time and I had about 70 readers that were all either related to me or had gone to college with me. And, um, and I wrote a blog post about my elf on the shelf and, and it broke out and it went viral and I had a million reads in 24 hours on that thing. And it just, and I had to learn very quickly about social media. I created um, Facebook accounts and Twitter accounts that night. And I got about 17,000 people to follow me that night. And then that's just sort of what's catapulted me. But the whole time I was sort of like, this isn't even my funniest. Like this isn't my best one. Like I was really disappointed. I was like, but I have better stuff, you know? And they were just like, it's okay, we'll read it later. And I'm like, no, but like, why this one? Like, why did you guys? And so it's sort of that, like, and now I would say, now I go more viral um, if I say something controversial, you know? Mm. Um, I had a blog post. I still, it still resurfaces every now and again about dogs that I just, I, you know, we got a pandemic puppy, but for the longest time I was sort of like, I didn't want a dog in my house and, and a dog is not a child. And, you know, your children are your children and your dogs are your dogs. And I didn't realize that I was like opening such a like oh, can of funny. worms. And so now it's like, I can tell when that blog post ends up on some like dog loving message board, because that is when I get death threats. <laughs> so, oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's so they're hilarious. super intense. They're very intense people about the dogs. And I'm just, and now I want to update them and be like, it's okay, folks. I have a dog. He's still not my kid, but I have one now. Like I get it. Okay. <laughs> they're adorable. They're fine. Oh, but. that's so funny. Cause I'm severely allergic to dogs. And so, uh -huh. um, I, it, it's not that I don't like dogs, but like, get your dog away from me because I'm <laughs> like super allergic. And so like one of the neighborhoods I lived in, 
um, in Atlanta, my friend was like, we're in the secret dog haters club. I'm like, we don't hate dogs. We just, you know, don't want the dogs on us. And so we call it the secret yeah. dog haters club. But people are like, funny, man, you can't talk about their dogs. And I'm like, it's not about your dog. It's just, I'm, you know, I value my life. I don't want to go to the hospital today. So right. Keep your dog off me. That's yeah, funny. yeah. Good. So I, I did not understand it. So every now and again, like I'll step into it. like there. Are, I mean, I'm a controversial writer anyway. So you know, I kind of pick a hard side and stick with it on many topics. And so I'm used to sort of creating controversy. But usually, when I hit publish, I know like I'll be like, okay, well, this one's gonna. Like I better be prepared today to like monitor yeah. my comment section. But when I published that one, I was sort of like, what is happening? <laughs> like, where did I go wrong on this? So Yeah. Well, it's funny because I, you know, my claim to fame, my little Z less fame is blogging and triathlon. So I was mm -hmm. a fat girl doing the sport of triathlon and that's how I kind of came into it. And so like my controversial ones are like picking a side on a swim technique or something or or saying like how <laughs> strength training matters in a swim and I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. Like, why am I fighting with you about this? But so right. how do you handle that controversy? I think I had to get out of practicing law because I can't handle controversy and I yeah. just want people to like me on the internet. And right. if they don't like me, I just want them to go away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I, how do you yeah. handle that? Well, so I think I've just, I've changed a lot. I've changed my tactics a lot over the years. You know, it used to be like, um, like this is the hill I'll, I saw that. Yeah, the kid comes in, like, he's like, oh, welcome to the pandemic. It's fine. Right, I know, I've got two home right now, too. So I'm expecting <laughs> someone to come and be like, what's for lunch? And, you know, so, um, yeah, I just, you know, I used to, like, I used to attend every fight I was invited to. I used to really enjoy, like, mixing it up online with strangers. You know, I'd be like, oh, let's go, you know, and I dive in and I love to correct grammar and I love to be like, you know, you probably live in your mom's basement and you're covered in Cheeto fuzz and, you know, all this stuff. And then like over time, it was sort of exhausting. It became like a full-time job, like fighting yeah. with people over it. Because, you know, back like when we first started blogging, I feel like it wasn't as hostile as it is now. It wasn't. <laughs> like yes. people will literally fight over anything right now. And so over the years, like I've, I've seen that start creeping. And especially for someone like me, where I... I attract, um, I attract people from all sides. And so everybody has someone they want to punch in the throat. And so, <laughs> so I had, so I'd have like these people in my comments fighting with each other. And, and I finally just had to like go Zen and I'm just like, and now I'm just sort of like, if you want to fight, like you guys can fight, but like, I'm, I'm going to do me, I'm, I'm going to do my thing. And so I just feel like, Yes, I'm trying to attract who I want to attract. And I kind of weed out, like I call it shaking the tree. That like yeah. I'll put in, you know, I'll put something up and everybody's like, oh, Jen wants to get rid of people today. You know, and I'm just <laughs> like, let's, let's go. <laughs> so, and so I think over the years I've kind of um I've kind of gotten rid, I've kind of gotten rid of a lot of people who just want to just fight over nothing. And yeah. I've kind of created this community where not everyone agrees with me, but at least they can be like, you know what? I didn't agree with this, but I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see what you have to, you know, maybe tomorrow will be better. And, and we kind of just sort of live in like this, like, you know, I don't know what you would call it, but like a standoff with each other that yeah. we're just like agree to disagree. But I, I, I found that it was just kind of like, I don't know, like, you know, I wasn't very productive if I was fighting with everybody. And so now I'm like super Zen about it and I still will put up controversial stuff. But I, it's like, it's literally the hill I'm, really, I'm, ready, I'm ready to die on. And there's some things, you know, like my husband and I work together and we have very different senses of humor and we have very different lines in the sand. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes he'll put something up and I'm like, really? Cause like, I'm going to get messages about that one. And I'm just not in the mood. Like, is that, cause like, I don't even think that one's that great. You know, I don't think that opinion's that funny. Can you just not yeah. put that up today. Like I don't have the bandwidth. <laughs> you know? So funny. I think that's more of what it is, is figuring out what will get my energy and what will not get my energy. Yeah, and that's, that's really such a good point. And especially as long as you've been doing it, because I feel this too, like there was a time when I would just write, yeah. you know, every day, just write. And now I'm like, I don't even want to hear it, you know? So I don't share as much. I mean, do you find that you you're kind of in that boat or do you, do you feel that you're still able to just be open and share? open still I don't blog as much as I used to and more of that is just because you know as your podcast says there's only 24 hours in a day and so <laughs> it's like I had to figure out you know if I'm going to do this professionally 
is blogging the best way to spend my time and to earn a living, you know, or is it writing books? Is it? Yeah. And so, but yet social media, I need that. And so I spend a lot of time like entertaining people on social media rather than like blogging. At this point I have 600 blog posts. Surely there's something somebody hasn't read out there. There's <laughs> no one who's read every single one of them. Like go find Start them. over. Right. Yeah. Right. You'd love to everyone to watch the office again, read the blogs again, you know, right. but, um, and so for me, like the blogging thing, like, yeah, I have to feel pretty strongly about it. I mean, I think the last time I really blogged um, actually was over a year ago. Um, I was sort of going through like this midlife crisis thing. And I was sort of feeling really confused about what I'm doing and where I'm going and, you know, my relationship, my, my kids, like all of it. And my husband was like, you know, you haven't been writing, you haven't been blogging in a long time. And he's like, and I think you should blog about it because I think for me, the blogging always made me know that I wasn't alone. Yeah. You know, for, for me, I started blogging from a place of like loneliness of a place of like feeling like I didn't fit in anywhere and that nobody else thought the way I thought. And so he was like, I think you have to like blog about it and see how everybody else is dealing with this. And so I, when I wrote that blog post, um, it went viral and my editor from Random House reached out and she was like, hey, this is your next book. Like you need to write this into a book. And so so I've been working on that for like a year. So with that, like I haven't been able to like blog and I haven't been able to like do as much social media. You know, I have a million followers now across all my platforms. And so it's like, I have to have people help me. Like it can't just all be me anymore. And yeah. that's where it gets kind of weird, I weird. guess, because it's not, <laughs> I don't feel as connected sometimes, you know, or, or it is stuff like that where I'll be like, Ooh, why did you put that up? Like, that is so not me, <laughs> you know, like, but, but I don't have right. time to do it. So I have to rely on people. You're like, that's me today. <laughs> yeah, I guess that is, you know? So yeah, but I, I just, I, you know, I just have to figure out kind of the best way to balance it all and, and where I'm going to, where I'm going to focus, I guess. Yeah. And for me, it's like, I want to be a full-time writer. I want to make this my, my, my career. And so I just, some things can't, I can't do all the things, I guess is the thing. Yeah, I know. And what you're saying is speaking to me so much because at the end of the day, I want to be a full-time writer too. Like, and it's like the thing I kicked down the road. I'm like, Oh, book number three, let me go podcast all day long today instead of, you know, and so the, the move I've made is like blocking off two days a week to write again. And it's like, okay, you got to do this thing, but it is, it is important to figure out, okay, what is the thing? What is the yeah. thing that I need to be doing? Because it sounds like you're like me that we can just be like, eh, squirrel, we'll go do all things. <laughs> oh, and I can avoid like nobody's business. You know, I can be like, oh, my deadline's coming up. I should clean my pantry. Right. You know? Like I don't right. feel like working on this. This is hard. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> Why did I want to be a writer? Being a writer's hard. Right. Like I'm feeling things and I don't like this. So I'm going to go find right. something else to do. But oh I, I think that's the thing. But I'm glad to hear that you're like blocking off time because I think that's like the important thing. You know, it's like, because I think that's probably the main thing I get asked all the time. It's like, how do you write as much as you write? And it, and it is, it's like taking that time and just being really very, um, I don't know, just like hoarding it to yourself, you know, yeah. just to like get out. I'm right. Yeah, you know? get out for sure. And like when I was working full time and I was right, because my first book I wrote while I was a lawyer, mm -hmm. I mean, that looked different than now, which now yeah. I block out a whole Thursday, like Thursday's writing day. Yeah. And to just look at my calendar and see that all day, like, you know, yeah. 24 hours, it, it's an amazing feeling. And sometimes mm -hmm. I just get right at it and I go for hours and sometimes I just don't but I found that if if you have the space to block off an entire day and that becomes the thing it's really that I, I've gotten so much done that's with good. that schedule like one day a week where I just yeah. like attack it well see, I think that's the thing too you have to figure out sort of what works for you like when I yeah. first started a full-time job and two little kids and so I'd write at night like I'd put everybody to bed and I'd stay up all night and write and then when uh, I remember when my youngest went off to all day kindergarten, I was like, hallelujah, like I'm going to have four hours like that. I can just like do, I can just write. And like the first probably two months I was like, anyone want to go to lunch? Like, anybody, like <laughs> maybe I should go shopping. Like I could go right. grocery shopping and not have anybody with me. And so I wasn't using that time. Like I was like, damn, I used to get more done during nap time than I'm getting done now. Right. So I'm more of like, I need like short bursts that I can just be really, really productive in and just be like, you have one hour, get some stuff done. And, yeah. And so that's better for me, but everybody, because if I had a whole day, oh my God, I'd just be like, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and that works for me, like when there's a deadline, but yeah. like this, so this current book I'm working on is my editor's like, yeah, we'll, we'll probably buy it when you get me 30,000 words in a proposal. You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. they don't want to commit, but it's probably like 90% certain like yeah. she's vibe and it, you know? And so she's like, you know, get me the words. And so there's no deadline. There's yeah. no like, you know, where if I'm like, you just need to put me under contract because then there will be a deadline, you know, like yeah. I can't, I'm Or the, you have to give yourself a deadline. Like, I, you know, cause I also self-publish. <laughs> and so like, so I have like random house giving me deadlines, but then I also have like self-publish. And so I have to give myself deadlines. Yeah. Cause otherwise, yeah, I'll just like, and the thing is like, okay, I want to kind of smack you right now because here's the thing. Like <laughs> you have an editor who wants to buy the damn book. Like just freaking <laughs> do it. Like do many people are sitting in rooms right now trying to write a book that no one even knows about yet and they don't even yeah. know if they can sell it. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, but that, that's the point. It's just, I'm so bratty about it. Thank you. I've talked, I, I had an interview earlier where someone was like, are you serious? And I'm like, okay, I'm shamed. It's fine. I'm going to, Thursday is this week. It's all right, okay. you know. I mean, with a whole 24 hours, you should be able to knock out 15,000 words. No problem okay. this Thursday. Okay, I'm duly shamed. It's fine. You want to punch me in the throat? Punch me in the throat, Jen. It's fine. No, I get it though. It is. It's that thing. Like if I, we'll see, I self-published my first book and then it got acquired and, and uh-huh. but like the, the self-published deadline, like, yeah, I was like November, no, no, no. I was much more regimented, but like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's just, I'm bratty. I blame right the now. pandemic though too. Like none yeah, of us, we all have oatmeal for brains right now. So <laughs> like nothing gets done. Like we're all like pulled in like 80 different directions. Like you just had someone peek in your door looking for something from you, you know, it's oh, like- It's something always- very, he needs very badly, like Wi-Fi, right? Like, right, you know, but it's something. like, I mean, they're just constantly, I mean, that's the thing. Like I finally, like this year, I was like, I have to write this book, you guys, like it is due. And I'm sorry you have homeschooling that needs to be done. Like you're just going to be dumb this year because mommy has a contract. You can repeat your grade, but I, this is for, this is my opportunity to write. That's what the way yeah. I look at it. I'm like, they can repeat six and seventh grade. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Oh my gosh. So out of all this time you've been writing about people you don't, you want to punch in the throat, like who is the person you want to punch in the throat? Like, is there um, an archetype of the, the primary person? Yeah. There's a few. So I think, so it's interesting. So the story you told about taking your shoes off under your desk, right? So you go to work and someone takes their shoes off under their desk and everybody's offended by that person, right? And so you would think that's the person you want to punch them throughout. And you do, but then, but I don't like the person though, who, who takes, who knowingly takes their shoes off and like funks us all out. Like, and I don't <laughs> I had like an the, office, <laughs> right. And I don't like the person though, who also won't admit like, who, like, I love people who can laugh at themselves. Like the fact that you wrote about that and you were like, okay, seriously, you guys, I was the idiot. Like I'm the one who did that, you know? Um, because I don't like people who can't laugh at themselves. I hate that. Like we all do. I think that's the thing that I keep trying to like re- reiterate to people is that yes, there is a list of people I want to punch and throw, but like literally I'm at the top of the list. Like I do so much of the same stuff that like I get irritated with, but I think the difference is like owning it. Like, you know, and I think, you know, that's the thing. It's like, you can own like how, how bad it was or, you know, like my son loves, my son is 16 and he loves to call me a Karen and he's always <laughs> calling me a Karen, which at first I was highly offended because I'm like, um, I don't call the cops on black people and I don't, right. you know, like pitch fits. But then I was like, but then I told him the other day, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take Karen back. I'm like, I'm going to be like a good witch. Like I'm going to be like a good Karen. I'm like, you're right. I am loud and I am obnoxious. And I do ask to see the manager when I'm <laughs> mad about something, you know, I'm like, but I'm doing it for the right reasons. And, and so I think that as long as like we own our kind of just like our weirdness and the things that we do that we know right. are annoying to other people. Um, it's when people who are just so self-absorbed that they have no clue what they're doing right. and they have no clue, like how everyone around them hates them. You know, I wrote a book called working with people. I want to punch in the throat a couple of years ago. And I have a quote in there that I'm just like, if you don't know who the person is in your office, that, that people want to punch in the throat, it's you, <laughs> like, you know, like right. you're the guy. <laughs> and right. because that's the thing, like everybody knows that we've all done these things, but if you don't, if you're like, no, I never do these things. You're the guy. You're the, you're person. the guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're, you bring, that's such a good point about the Karen thing too. Like all white women, we all Karens. 
Yeah. Great. Like I got a newsflash for you. Like we have terrible unconscious bias. We are incredibly privileged and entitled and it's all there. And so to pretend like, you know, we're not like, yeah, you're the Karen. <laughs> if you're yeah. not, if you're not laughing about it. Right. Or well, I mean, and I not necessarily like laughing, use, but yeah. And I got to use my Karenness for good now. Like, yes. okay, fine. You're right. I'm a Karen, but step out of my way. Cause I'm coming into my power and I'm going to bring it to good. You know, I'm a right. good witch. And so that's kind of more how I look at it is that you know, rather than getting offended, like, and if you get offended, maybe you need to take a closer look at why you're offended. Oh, yeah. Like if you I mean, if it scratches by, you, it's because it's itching. Like, yeah. that's right. That's right. You yeah. know, you think this is about you because it is about you because you, you know, <laughs> right. it's that kind of thing. So I think those are the people who just drive me batty, batty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Jen, tell everyone, oh, first of all, before you go, um, the name of your children, <laughs> <laughs> in your and, writings I, yeah. I don't want you have to tell the audience so uh so I call my children Gomer and Adolfa and I call <laughs> them that because to protect their identity but also because their real names are actually worse and I don't want the hate mail um yeah when I started writing when they were three and five like I got because it was the elf on the shelf that went viral for me um like 99 percent of people liked it but there was that really weird population of women out there that wanted to come and steal my children and, you know, and raise them in like a land of elves oh. and like be the good mommy to them. And because I was a bad mom and it freaked me out because they would have gone with anybody with a puppy. And so, so I've never put their photos up and I've never put their real names up. And, um, and then I write under a pseudonym so that we don't have the same name, but it, like, but yeah, Gomer and Adolfo, and I picked it out of a book. Everyone always asks me, there's a book here on my desk somewhere. It's buried under all my crap. Gomer I have and a Adolfo. book of like, you know, 20,001 baby names. And I just sort of flipped through it and found the two worst names I could find. So. Do you ever call them that in the house? You know, I don't. They hate their names. I hate, they, well, they hate their real names and their fake names. Um, but like <laughs> when every now and then, like now since they're teenagers and stuff, sometimes, especially my daughter will go with me to like a book signing to help me like do stuff. And people will be like, oh my God, it's Adolfa. And she's like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she does not like that. But Oh my eh. gosh, so funny. Well, tell everyone where they can find you and um, your your newest book will be out when? What's the date on that? Right. So I just published uh, Traveling with People I Want to Punch in the Throat, and that's available everywhere books are sold. And then I just turned in Midlife Bites, and that one won't be out until January of 2022. And that one is kind of like a, I keep saying it's like girl wash your effing face. It's like, <laughs> it's kind of like it's half you are a badass and half girl wash your face. It's all about my midlife crisis and what I'm doing to get through it. So, okay. um, and all, that will also be available everywhere. And you can find everything about me on people. I want to punch in the throat .com. I'm on all your social medias. I'm just learning the TikTok today. I'm going to make my <laughs> first TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. I'm going to make my first TikTok video today because, you know, it's only been around for 10 years. So it's about time right. for me to get on and ruin it for everybody. <laughs> so so oh but God. yeah I'm on like all the social medias and if you go to people I want to punch in throat.com you can find me everywhere awesome well Jen this was awesome such an honor to speak to you and oh, I had thank so much you fun. so much thank you thanks for reaching out and I'm so glad we did this this was a great interview and I had a really fun time Hi, and welcome to the Same 24 Hours Podcast. I'm Meredith Atwood, author of the book, The Year of No Nonsense. I'm a former attorney turned writer, speaker, and Ironman triathlete. Although right now, all I really like to do is lift weights. We all have the same 24 hours, but it's what we do in those hours that leads to our greatest health, happiness, and success. It's my goal to crack the code on a life of less nonsense so we can all make the most of our 24 hours. So let's get started.